this video, we're going to do a review plus Easter eggs for The Flash, Season 1, Episode 14, Fallout. If your inner fanboy fangirl isn't screaming right now, then you are quite possibly dead. We had almost everything this episode. Talk of time travel, Iris becoming the super snoopy reporter, Gorilla Grodd, Wells in his reverse Flash costume and taking his helmet off, Firestorm merging and unmerging. My gosh, we had like almost everything. Some really fun points. I am really starting to love Wells' wordplay, uh, like when Ronnie apologizes for him being in a chair and Wells goes, I put myself in this chair. And it's like, yeah you did, you got out of bed and walked over to your chair and put yourself in there, you jerk. And then Wells, you know, kind of beating around the bush saying time travel might work, and it's like, you sly dog, you know exactly that time travel is going to work. Another cool point is Iris becoming the super, uh, super Snoopy reporter. If you're reading the New 52 Flash, this actually causes um, some problems between Barry and Iris because she's always trying to get more information and more help and kind of like using him for things and she's just always in the way. And in the recent uh, Flash New 52, when Barry gets replaced with someone else, he actually gets pretty angry at her and her need for always being there in the story and all that. So it's kind of cool that they're making her more the super snoopy reporter, and that's going to probably cause a lot of issues between her and Barry as he she's getting closer to him and his friends just to get this information. Um, Firestorm! That whole thing was so beautifully done. I kind of joked that the reason why Firestorm was going away was because that they couldn't afford the CGI because it is amazing. The merging, the on-merging, just all the special effects with Firestorm is incredible. And I was really worried about how they were going to do the disembodied head voice thing, talking to Ronnie, and how they did it as just like a, a disembodied voice that he hears was marvelously done, and I really like that they finally changed it so um, Ronnie is in charge of his body, and Steen is there. Doctor Steen is just the the voice, kind of like guiding him and letting him know, "Hey, you can do this." What I really also like about this show is the fast movement. I mean, you'd almost think that this is a show about being fast, right? They go through things that normally other, like even the Arrow, I love the Arrow, so don't get me wrong with this one, that they take like four or five episodes for someone, another character, to admit what they learn. This one, bam, very next episode, Joe's like, hey, this is what we discovered, adult you, time traveled, and was here the night that your mom was murdered. Like, they did not even beat around that bush. He's like, I have important information for you. I care about you. I'm going to instantly give you this important information, unlike, you know, a lot of other shows that don't do that, and they try to, like, heighten up the drama of, what am I going to tell him? And I really, one, I love time travel, two, it, that's a really sad storyline in Flash in general of him trying to go back to save his mom, and I won't tell you whether he fails or doesn't fail or what happens if he does succeed, but... Think about that right now from Barry's perspective. He knows that he goes back in time to try to save his mom, and he fails. So right now, he already knows that he's set up for failure, and he's thinking, well, what if I just train really hard and I know that I fail, so that way I won't fail this time because I know to train harder. And if you think about it in different contexts of time travel, not knowing where they're going to go with time travel, whether they're going to follow the comics or not, what if he knows that he is going to fail every time and thinks because he knows he's going to fail, it means he won't fail because he's going to train harder not to fail. And it's just like this whole circle cycle of rinse and repeat. And it's just kind of really terrible and heartbreaking to think of. But still super cool that we're going to get time travel very soon and that Barry is starting to learn more and more about his powers and what the extent of it and what he can do. And I think he's going to start getting a rude awakening that having the power to perhaps go through time does have consequences and it's not as happy-go-lucky as you think it might be. The weapons used against the Flash by the General Eileen I think was really cool. Um, the porcupine thing I'm going to talk about in Easter eggs, but um, for a while in the comics Flash did actually become the porcupine man when he like forgot who he was and all that, so that was kind of cool. Um, the weapons that they're developing to combat metahumans, I think, on that side, is so awesome to see. And how exactly you would stop these people, and it's kind of like Batman with his little cases of what do I do in case of each. Superhero goes rogue, 
and the general and his people and others try to combat metahumans, which aren't the bad metahumans, but they think they're the bad metahumans because as humans we freak out when there's something new and different and something might be more powerful than us. And then finally, the most exciting part of the episode was Grodd and the Reverse Flash, and the fact that we saw him and I was like, oh, okay, it's gonna be another guessing game, and no, the Flash does not mess around. This show is amazing. He takes off his helmet and he's like, yep, I'm Harrison Wells. Yep, I'm in cahoots with Grodd. So what? And like, just so to the point. And I was also worried about how they were going to deal with Grodd and if they were going to muck that all up. And they did an awesome job with seeing him. And they went full-blown psychic gorilla. And I am so excited about that. And if you noticed, it was inside the general's head talking. He's like, oh god, it's in my head. And, you know, Grodd is, like, psychic, and he gets other powers, and it's... Oh my god, I was so exciting. I, like, I need to stop because I'm going to fangirl so hard about this. So I want to jump right into Easter eggs, which goes into the Grodd thing. If you notice that we had um, another episode where we had people going in to figure out the electrical disturbances dealing with it, and then they met with Grodd, and that was that whole thing. Well, if you know anything about the Reverse Flash, and I think you should realize that by now, that when the Reverse Flash goes places, there's electrical disturbances. And the two electrical workers were trying to figure that out, and there was electrical shortages and issues with that, and that's where Grodd was hiding. So that shows us that the Reverse Flash and Grodd are working together. Those two are in cahoots, they're working together, and I thought that was super cool. And that also goes with when Dr. Steen was being tortured, and... Alan and um, the general was talking about how the last time he used the kettle prod it was on a gorilla and that's another callback to him and Dr. Wells experimenting on Grodd before the particle accelerator went all crazy. Um, the meta-ness in the episode of going dude that can turn into poison gas and Cisco goes that was like week three and that actually lines up with when they got the mist was actually in episode 3, so it was kind of super meta-ish. Um, another thing is when they go, Impossible's just another Tuesday for us. The call to the Flash is on Tuesday. Uh, if you notice that Mason Bridge ends up saying that it makes as much sense as Dothraki, and that's a call to Game of Thrones, which is a fictional language there. Um, the General, too, he has been in, in two episodes now, I think so, but he has a huge history in the comics. And he super hates metahumans. He just goes crazy for them. And he actually causes some issues for Justice League and Justice League Unlimited when he just can't help himself. Coast City was mentioned, and we know that Coast City is where Hal Jordan is from. Um, Firestorm, the merging, and Ronnie had white eyes. That's exactly like the comics. And I was a little worried for a while when Steen was the one in charge, but they actually merged completely, so Ronnie is in control of his body. And Steen is kind of there just like saying, hey, you should do this, watch out over here, we can we can use our powers like this. He helps him along, because this guy is super brilliant. And they are heading back to Pittsburgh, too. They said that at the end of the episode, and that is where those two originate from, which was pretty cool. So, pretty cool Easter eggs. Awesome episode. I cannot wait for March 17th. I think it's, oh, is that they have to wait a month, but with special effects and all that, I kind of understand. So anyways, those are my thoughts. You can make sure you like and subscribe.